Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our dialogue tutorial where we're making these nice little text boxes as a simple way to show dialogue or text or tutorials or whatever you want to use them for in your own game in your own special way. Uh, so, last time we showed how to turn these things on and off uh, at will, and there's one more thing that we wanted to cover, which is to show text um, appearing letter by letter in the boxes, like it does in many older games, uh, and to be able to if it's scrolling along and the player wants to just see everything at once you can hit another button and it makes all the text appear at once uh, and it's a relatively straightforward thing to do uh, we're going to do it just in our text box manager script so we're going to open that up in our program and we're going to add a couple of little things before any functions so what we're going to need is a private bool um, we'll call it is typing and we'll set it to false straight away. Uh, so this will be for when it's scrolling the text across the screen. So then we know when it'll stop and when it, when it's when it's active and when it's not. Uh, we want to be able to interrupt our text. So we want to have another bool for that. So we'll call this cancel typing. And we set that to false straight away as well. Uh, and we want a speed that we want the text to scroll across the screen. So public float type speed. Because we want to be able to adjust that slightly. Okay. So what we're going to we're going to need to make a small change to our update section here. Because rather than saying, okay, when we press the key button down to uh, move to the next bit of text. We don't want it to just go, okay, add the line and then display the text on the screen. So we're going to comment this bit of thing out here so that we're no longer just showing the line of text up on the screen. And what we're going to say is instead of getting the key down there, no, actually, no, we're going to leave that there, but we're going to add another little thing in here. And we're going to say if not is typing. So if we're not type if the, the scroll the text isn't scrolling across already then oh oh no we stand inside the bracket back in there then what we're going to do is we're going to say add one to the current line we'll just drag this back up here so it makes sense oh there we go um and we're going to move this little bit up here also so now that we have uh, just, oh, I'm supposed to cut that out. Uh, so now we have, if the current line is added to one and if it goes too far, then we want to disable the text box. Otherwise, we're going to run a bit of script in here that makes the, the script, the text scroll across the screen. And, and we'll start that out in a second, but we'll come back to that in a minute. But we want to say up here, so if it's not typing and we press the button, then we want it to start doing the scrolling across the screen with a new line of text. But if it is already scrolling, so else, if it's already scrolling, then we want to say, okay, actually, else if is typing and it's, we haven't already canceled typing. So if it's if it's if it's already typing out and we haven't already cancelled this, which is basically us interrupting the text as it's scrolling across the screen already, if we haven't already interrupted it, we'll say cancel typing is equal to true, like that. So we'll demonstrate that once we have it going in the game. Um, but for now, we'll just leave that as there. Uh, so if we go down here, what we're going to use is a coroutine to handle the text scrolling along the screen. Because basically all we're going to do is start with a blank box and add on each letter one by one as it goes, as it reads through the line of text. So we're just going to say private I enumerator. And we're going to call it text scroll. So I enumerator is basically what you use for creating a coroutine. And I'll go through what coroutines are now just in case you haven't encountered them before. Um, I'm going to say we call it text scroll and it's going to take in a string called line of text which will be our line of text 
that we're using in our that we want to display on screen. So basically, the way um, coroutines work is that, for example, as we go along here, if we go through our script normally, we go to update something and it goes down to here. And if it gets down to this bit where the current line is greater than ended line, then we call the function disable text box. And then what happens is the computer goes, okay, we need to run this little bit of function. So it goes to that, finds that down below here, disable text box, and it goes, okay, we'll do all this stuff here. Once that's done, it goes back up above here and it continues on with anything else it needs to do. Uh, but coroutines are different. So basically what happens with coroutines is they kind of work in their own little timeline. So what happens is we're going to call our coroutine here. And so the, the script will come down along to here. It'll get to this point and it'll start the coroutine. But at the exact same th time as it starts the coroutine, uh, it'll also go, okay, the coroutine has started so we can just continue on with the rest of our code. So it'll keep going down this stuff. And whatever we put in our coroutine will just work in its own little loop off to the side, essentially. Um, and the way we call the coroutine, which is back in this little gap where we had our, if our current line is greater than that line, uh, otherwise we want to do a bit of code. So in here, we're going to say start coroutine. Oh no, start, just start coroutine. Oh, hold on. Just want to make sure I type this in properly. Start coroutine. And then within inside these curly brackets, we just put the semicolon at the end. Within inside these, we say the name of the coroutine, which is text scroll. And then some curly brackets there. And within that, we have to pass in our string that we want to use. And the string that we're going to pass in is, much like we've appeared, we're going to use text lines current line. So text lines and then our square brackets current line so what this will do is once there's we have our text box up on screen and it will already have a box in it it will already have a line of text in it for example actually yes before we move on to how it works what we need to say is when we start our when we ena first enable the text box we also want to run uh, our, our coroutine at the exact same time so it will play the first line of text that we want to use so here we will say start coroutine actually we'll just copy and paste the exact same thing because we're using the exact same bit of text here so once again we're just going to start the coroutine at the text line's current line that's fine so basically yes what will happen is it'll see there's a line already on the screen and it'll go okay move on to the next line after we've pressed our return button uh, and it'll start the coroutine to start scrolling through the text so what are we going to have in our coroutine it's relatively straightforward. Basically, what we want to say is we want to start with emptiness and just add one letter at a time to our string of text until the whole line is complete. So we'll need just an inter integer value here. So we'll say int uh, letter, just to keep track of what letter we're on within the string. Uh, and the text that's been displayed, the text dot text, is equal to two curly brackets, or sorry, not curly brackets, two quotation marks. And basically what that will say is, okay, just display nothing within the box. So it'll just be, a, it'll, it'll show the box on screen, but it'll be blank. But straight away, we're gonna start adding in some, some uh, letters. But before that, we wanna say, is typing is now equal to true, because we're starting typing, and cancel typing is equal to false. Because obviously we don't want to be cancelling typing at the exact same moment we're starting the typing. So how we're going to make the letters appear on screen is by using a while loop. And if you haven't encountered while loops before, basically while loops keep looping as long as the statement within these uh, brackets is true. So within our, our curved brackets here, we're going to say while is typing is true and not cancel typing so as, as long as cancelled as, as long as typing hasn't been cancelled and we are still is typing um, and our letter value so our int letter here is less than line of line of text which is the value that we put into our coroutine line of text 
dot length. So the length of the string. Oh God, what did I do there? It's about length wrong was the problem. Dot length minus one. So as long as our letter value is less than the length of the text minus one, we're going to be able to run this little loop inside of us. We need another curly bracket there. Um, so inside here, we're going to say the text. No, oh, not. I keep adding letters that don't make any sense. The the text dot text uh, plus equals line of text letter. So what line of text letter does here is it looks at the string of the text and it goes to whatever character is at the number that we're on here. So say we're at character five, it'll go to whatever letter that is. If it's if the word is Batman, it'll go to the second A, for example. Um, uh, after that, we'll say letter plus equals one. So we add, an, add so we're moving on to the next letter. And then yield return new wait for seconds type speed. So what we're doing there is we're saying, okay, we're adding on our letter. We're incrementing our letter value here. So we're moving on to the next letter. And we're saying, okay, after you've done that, we're going to wait for however long we've set for our type speed. So however long we're waiting for our, our letter text scroll across the screen, that's how long we're going to wait here. And this this thing of return wait for seconds, you can only use that within a coroutine routine because or else it'll hang up your whole uh, update loop. It doesn't it doesn't so it doesn't function uh, within Unity normally. So you can within a, a coroutine, routine you can make it wait for as long as you want. For example, if you want to make something wait for like five seconds before something else happens, you will use a coroutine routine for something like that. Uh, but once that's basically done cycling through, so it'll get to the end of this, it'll wait a few seconds, and it'll go, okay, um, check all this stuff again. If that's all true, we'll run it, and it'll keep doing that until the letter value is equal to the length of the line of text. And when that happens, we're going to say text dot text is equal to line of text. So the reason we say that is because if up above here, if our coroutine is running and we, the, the text is in the middle of coming across the screen and as soon as we say, okay, press enter again and then it'll say, okay, no, we've already started our coroutine so we know where we are typing and we haven't pressed cancel typing yet. So if we hit return again, it's turned cancel typing to true. So then when that becomes true, then down here, this while loop is suddenly broken. So if, if we're only halfway through our text, we don't want it to go, okay, stop typing any more text now. We want it to go, okay, now that we know it's been canceled, just print out the whole line on screen so it's immediately all there. And then once that's done, we'll say is typing is equal to false because we're no longer adding any more text. And we'll say cancel typing is equal to false also just to reset that value if it's been set and interrupted. So if we save this now, pop back in here. Once this compiles, okay, go to our text box manager. We're gonna set type speed just to 0.2 so we can show for reference. Um, and we're going to hit play and hopefully Everything should go according to plan, and we'll well I'll make a few notices of different things. So there you go. You can see it's very slowly typing across the screen. Point two is probably very slow, but it works for our demonstration purposes here. Who are you? So if we go over to this guy now, that's going too slow. So we want to skip ahead. Oh, there we go. We can pop up the whole bit of text all in one go, and we can increase our type speed. So if we just set it to zero, it'll be very very fast. Scrolls across the screen just like that. Whatever the frame rate of the system is will make it scroll faster. So you might not want to put it at zero necessarily. Uh, say we we'll put it at 0 0.01, just so we, it's relatively consistent across systems. Then, 
So it goes fast enough and that's okay for us. Um, so we'll, we'll just take a look at how it would operate if we take out a couple of these things. So if we didn't have our line of text, oh, if we didn't have our line of text being added after we after our while loop, you'll see, oh, it would be handy if I actually save that too. You'll see once we play this, Okay, we walk over here, we interrupt it. Oh no, our text doesn't appear properly. Obviously that's not what we want. So that's why you have to add in the little, uh, the text is equal to line of text, just like that. And we have our cover team being canceled just nice and smoothly and everything is working just exactly the way we want it to. Actually, we'll just make sure and save that just so there's nothing weird happens. Um, but there you go, that's the basis of how to, how to add a nice little bit of scrolling text to your boxes and make it feel a little bit more alive and a little bit more interactive to the player. So thanks for watching everybody. I will return soon with more tutorial goodness. And in the meantime, keep spreading those words. <laughs>